So, I'm going to talk about uh, understanding speed, that is section 2.1, and then I'll just go and, if this part, we've already covered it on Tuesday, if you're okay with it, I can skip to the next section. I think I have the first three done, I'm not sure. Oh, Fine. you recorded. Yeah. So, this one, the first part is just distance, time, and speed, which is something that you should have all seen before, even in math class, science class, right? You've probably seen this once before. So speed is equal to distance over time. And if I'm finding average speed, that's equal to the total distance divided by the total time. Okay? Two fairly straightforward uh, equations. So a cyclist completed a 15 meter, 1,500 meter stage of a race in 37.5 seconds. What was her average speed? So divide stuff. Divide what? Divide mm. by zero, zero over the... Time. Yeah, exactly. Just take distance, total distance divided by total time, and that gives us a number, totally a number. A total number. number. A total number of uh, average. 40. 40. Now, what is my yeah, unit exactly. going to be? 40, uh, 40 meters per second. Meters per second. Exactly. That's, a, that's pretty fast. Now, with this, your units are very important. Just like all the other things we did in physics so far, your units are very important. They change depending on what you're talking about. So make sure you get your units correct. So it's always distance than the... Time. Distance over time. Yep. Is that really fast? That's fast. That's fast. That's, fast. that's pretty fast. For a second. We can actually calculate, like, if you can actually kill himself if you fall. Maybe. Um, okay, so now, same deal, but rearranging the equation, right? So we had speed equals distance over time, which means distance is equal to speed times time, and time is equal to distance over speed, right? So just taking, so you can take that triangle, exactly. If you remember this, we did this with uh, resistance, current, and voltage. You can do the exact same thing with this. So distance on top, time, and speed. Same thing. But the D just has to be on top, that's all. Otherwise, it doesn't matter whether the other two are switched. ST or TS. Okay? One second, I'm not. We already did so, this. mine. I know, that's what I'm going through quickly. If you have this, it's all on this. Yes, it is. So, an aircraft travels 1,200 meters in 6 seconds. <coughs> what is its speed? So, speed, distance divided by time, which in this case would be 200 meters per second. Wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you, yeah, yeah. And the last one, a car travels 120 kilometers per hour for 300 seconds. How far did it travel? Do you have to change it into this it says, watch your units. No, you don't have to change it into meters. Kilometers per hour is fine. The problem is the fact that this is seconds and this is hours. So that's what you should change. You can either change it from kilometers per hour to meters per second or kilometers per second. Or you can change 300 seconds into hours, which for what we're doing, it would probably be easier to do this one first. There is a nice calculation that you can use to change kilometers per hour into meters per second, but we'll get to that later. For now, we can just change 300 seconds into hours. So how am I going to do that? Well, uh, you do it into minutes and then hours. So divided by 60 and again. So we have 120 kilometers per hour, 300 seconds. So divide that by five minutes. Well. Not 160 and 3,600. But I'll start. You divide it by 60 first, right? Five minutes. So that tells us it's five minutes. Then I take this and I divide it by 60 again. And that would give me. Yeah. Five um, hours. So now I can do my calculation. So here I'm trying to find. Sorry about the light how far uh, it traveled, right? So I'm finding distance, so I just take speed times time, which is equal to 10 kilometers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Not too bad, because this is what we, or what you did. I wasn't here, but what you did last time. Easy enough. So, then we'll skip to the next part, uh, distance time graphs. So, uh, we can describe how something travels in words. So, for example, the coach pulled away at a steady speed, heading out of town. After five minutes, it sped up on the highway. After ten minutes, it was forced to stop because of traffic. So, we can use this information to draw a distance time graph. Now, a distance time graph doesn't always have to have specific units. I mean, I could have said that the coach pulled away at, you know, 30 meters per second, sped up to... Uh, for five minutes, sorry, sped up to, I don't know, 50 meters per second, then stop, something like that. Like, I could give you units, but you don't have to. You can use distance time graphs just to kind of describe a story almost, just to show this, uh, how this person traveled. So, I thought he was running for a while. Yeah. So here, we have... I wonder if I can fix this. Ah, oh, much better. Okay. So here we have time. Right? Um, sorry, I shouldn't put S. Time. And here we have our distance. So, it says at first that the coach pulled away at a steady speed heading out of town. So, what should the beginning of my graph look like? It's No, it's going to look like up by a sink. Because he had it out, so it's gonna just start up at a speed. So you you're both kind of oh, right. Up and then, I'm and then understanding what you're saying. Up, it up. should be a steady line, a straight yeah. line, because this is the distance he's getting from town, or however you might want to look at it. So if he's traveling at 10 meters per second and it's not changing, then his distance is going up. that he's getting away is constantly at the same amount, the same rate. Okay. So after five minutes, which we'll say is there, let's say, it's sped up on the highway. So now, it's, hmm? yeah, so the line still going straight, but it gets steeper. Because it takes less time to travel the same amount of distance. Less time to travel, same or greater, but yes, it's going faster. And then it says, it was forced to stop because of traffic. And then it's literally just straight line. Yeah, a horizontal line. Because you're waiting for the time. Right, because he stopped, so his distance is not changing. Stop. Wait a minute. Exactly. So that would be an example of how to draw this distance time graph. Now the one that I have here is the same situation, but obviously done much better. So he sped up at a con or, sorry, he left at a constant speed for five minutes. Then after he sped up, so the slope is greater, it's a steeper line. Then at 15 minutes, in this case, he had to stop due to traffic. So it's a horizontal line. Okay, so the slope of a distance time graph tells us how fast the coach is moving. The steeper the slope, the faster the speed. And when the slope is horizontal, the speed is zero. Yeah. So any questions about this? Nah, what was that? So, next one is understanding acceleration. Deceleration. So when an object's speed changes, we call that acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which the speed changes. If the speed is decreasing, we call that deceleration. Okay? Acceleration, if it's increasing, deceleration, if it's decreasing. That's Makes sense, right? So, speed time graphs. Very similar <laughs> distance time graphs. Only now, we have speed instead, which means we can find different information from this compared to a distance. Pudding. No distance, right? What are you saying? Pudding. Pudding. Sure. Pudding. 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 Pudding.
Okay, and then what's the straight Where price? Where it keeps the same, like, constant, uh, speed. constant speed. And then what's this? Uh, when it's, like, stopping. And it's then what speed. would this be? The time it waits, stopped. like, when it's not moving at all, on the stop. Yes, exactly. So, speeding up, they have to constant push. speed, so decreasing right. speed, and then this would be a stop for picking someone up, dropping someone off, right? Yeah, because and because it's a bus, it's constantly stopping and picking people up. Not necessarily, because the amount of people that take the bus, it saves fuel versus having all of those individual people drive the car. Yeah. Yeah, but it like destroys the motor of the car, of the bus. Oh, yeah, buses take a lot of wear and tear, of course. But it's, it's better for the environment, still. But the buses... But plus, most buses, or a lot of buses and things nowadays, run on electricity anyway, so you're not really wasting any fuel. Yes? No, I was just like, walking for the wind. Oh, good. But yes, that's how speed time graph works. Now, with the speed time graph, we can actually calculate distance. So, this just going through exactly what we just said. Negative slope means deceleration. Steeper the line, faster the acceleration. When it's horizontal, the speed is constant. So, this is another example, but what I really want to talk about is the curved part here. What does it mean when the line is curved? This is another it's speed like changing. The speed's changing. Yes, but the so speed on the other one is changing. It's not accelerating at a steady speed, it's accelerating distance. Yes, that means the acceleration is changing. So, with this example, the acceleration was constant. That's why mm -hmm. it's a straight line. That's why. But here, it's curved. So that's why the acceleration is not constant. Well, so this just goes through curved uh, area. Sorry, curved areas means the acceleration is not constant. And this is the part about finding distance from a speed time graph. To find the distance traveled from a speed time graph, that is, you have to calculate the area underneath the line. So, for example, the shade is the speed of this is 10 meters per second for 20 seconds. If I want to calculate the distance, I have to calculate the area of this part. Wow. It's, it's 10 times, what's the bottom line? 20. 10 times 20. So it's so like length or length over length. Length. Yes. So it's length. Length. Yeah, it's so length. 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 yeah, it's just find the area of a rectangle. And in some cases, a triangle. And what if it's what like going around? If it's curved, I won't ask you to do that, because that involves different things that we're not going to get into yet. So we don't need to think about the curve. No. I mean, you could estimate it if you just drew a straight line in between and made an estimation, but I'm not going to expect you to find the exact way yet. So the important thing is, if you find the area beneath the line, that tells you the distance traveled. Any questions about that? I have a different question. Sure. Okay. Not to my knowledge, so it would but there are some teachers that have nut allergy. Really? really? Miss Connors, for example. What allergy? Nut allergy. Nut like peanuts. Peanuts? peanuts? Um, no. So can I bring peanuts? Can I bring peanuts? Can I bring them to school and eat them here? No. What? It's against the rules. The rule isn't necessarily there just because there's a person. It should be there always. So if someone does show up that has a nut allergy, then we already oh, follow the rules. No, 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 no. People you should... cannot eat peanuts. To... Yeah, I know, but like, I'm allergic to pollen, so does it mean that we should have no flowers in this period? Right, but your allergy to pollen doesn't make you swell up and choke and die. How do you know? Because then you would be dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but uh, why can't we eat peanuts if we don't eat peanuts? Because some people, just the smell of it will cause a reaction. Yeah. So well, like, if we are in like, a different like, 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 Let's talk about this in a minute. Over the past two years, there's been a bunch of people in that's ever nothing ever. Yeah, true. So, this is the last part, okay? We need to find the distance traveled with the following speed time graphs. So, I want you to work on those three. Find the distance, meaning finding the area beneath the lines. For each one, it's meters. Because these are the speed is meters per second. 
and time is seconds, which means excuse me, your distance unit will be meters. Okay. Okay. Do we use Pythagorean theorem for that? No. Um, base times height divided by two gives you the area of a triangle. Uh, so is it? Uh, That's a three, right? Like, so mm -hmm. For the first one. And now, wow. Okay. Uh -huh. What's first? Uh -huh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You have to do first. There's a lot eight there. times there. eight is times eight? two. Yeah, eight. Eight times two. Five. No, two. Why five? There's you see, like it's first. Five? Why don't you first do the rectangle? You have to split it up. Do the triangle first, rectangle second, add them together. You won't do it times five. The, the rectangle oh, is eight. Oh, 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 you have the last one. Yes. And? Um, no. No. Oh? I, are you serious? Okay, I have the last one. So together it's um, 30. No. Yeah. No, no, no. 28. Because I thought that I messed up 18 and 16. Yes. So I know I already heard this, but what's the answer for A? 30. 30. 50. Meters. Meters. Don't forget your units. Second one. It's not. We are finding area, but the area just gives us the distance, which is not square. Okay, so 15 and... Uh, and this one was 15... Meters? meters? I said it. <laughs> and the last one is... 28 meters. So, to get this, you calculate this first, which is 8 times 3 divided by 2. This one is 2 times 8, because from 3 to 5 is 2. So the length is 2 here. 16. She didn't know how much was 8 times 3, and she had to use it. I can just take it, and then I know it's too much. I mean, oh, that was 3 plus 3. I'm on a D. So, for this part, do we have any questions? No, no, no. No, I just made a silly mistake. Because from what I saw, some of you got this far and practiced it or at least looked at it in the book. I did. That's why I said some. It is easy.